I had asked in my last haul video if you guys wanted to see like a demo and separate video on the new Anastasia Beverly Hills products that I picked up. I purchased one of the bronzers, the Amrezi highlighter, and then the new Soft Glam eyeshadow palette. And you guys said yes! <laughs> so I thought I'd go ahead and do that today. And I did do a demo using all of these products, which is the look that's on my face right now. And that'll be towards the end of the video if you're interested in seeing how these worked for me. I purchased these products at Ulta about two weeks ago and I've been using them pretty consistently since. And I'm really happy with all three of them. I will go ahead and zoom up close and give you guys some swatches um, but just starting off with the bronzer there are six shades I was able to swatch them in the Ulta store when I was there and I picked up the shade Tawny which it had the most red undertone. I really like a red tone bronzer I feel like it gives that uh, a more natural in the sense that you slightly got a sunburn <laughs> type of look which I have really red undertones so that looks good on my skin tone so I, I purchased the shade Tawny there's 0.35 ounces or 10 grams of product inside of here I really like the new Anastasia compacts I think that they're, they're really pretty and, and chic looking I've been using it on the Sonia G sculpt one brush I put it on the tips for like the um, cheekbone area and then buff it in big circular motions and I use the tips on the un underneath my jaw and then I kind of use Use the side of the brush to kind of do my forehead. Um, a little bit of this goes a long way. I just barely tap in the tips of the brush and put it, concentrate it where I would like it the most and then start buffing it out. Um, if you get a little heavy handed with it, it can look muddy. So I would go in with a, a bigger, fluffier brush with a really light hand. <laughs> but other than that, it's a really pretty bronzer, great pigmentation to it. So this is what she looks like up close. Showing up pretty true to color in the viewfinder. I do have this on. It's so smooth. It feels so smooth. So there's a pretty concentrated swatch. And then if I blend it out, that's what it looks like. So this is the one in Tawny. And then when I swatched the Amrezi highlighter in the store, it was just so shiny. I was like, I don't typically go for that gold of a highlight. It just, you know, I'm more into the pinky tones and stuff like that. But I just... I couldn't leave the store without it. <laughs> and then I've been using a little bit deeper foundation. I'm in love with the new Ket Powder Foundation. That's what's on my skin today. And since I've been using a deeper color on my skin, this actually looks really pretty. It doesn't quite give the lifted light look on top of my cheekbone. It kind of blends nicely into the skin, but the sheen, the sheen is so, so pretty. The formula is one of those baked jelly type textures similar to the MAC in Extra Dimension formula, which is one of my favorite highlighting formulas. I love the jelly texture. So this is what the packaging looks like. It's very cute. Uh, 0.31 ounces of product in here. The brush that I've been loving to use with this is the new Sonia G Sculpt 3 brush. It's a little fan brush where you can get it precisely where you want it. And it's dense enough that it picks up a nice amount of product and blends it really nice. I find that two wispy of a fan brush I can't get the blend quite as well as I would like it so this one's a little bit more dense and not so like fluffy and I like that about it and I can I can get the highlighter exactly where I want it so I've been loving to use this brush with it and I just you know put it in there like that so let's give you some swatches of this guy I will compare it next to Charlotte Tilbury's bar of gold and also the original Estee Lauder heat wave which both of those are jelly texture as well. This guy is in the middle in terms of tone from the other two. So here's a throwback OG OG. This is the original heat wave right here. This is darker in color than the Amrezi highlighter. So there it is right there. And then I'll swatch it underneath. So as you can see from the pan, I didn't get a ton of use out of the original Heat Wave just because it pulls a little bit deeper on my skin tone. And then I'll go ahead and swatch it next to Charlotte Tilbury's Bar of Gold. This is lighter and a little bit more yellow than the Amrezi. So this one actually does give a little bit more of a lift on my skin tone because it's a brighter yellow. And then moving on to the Soft Glam eyeshadow palette, it has got that same type of packaging where it's like a soft velvet feel. This is a lighter color, so I'm sure it's already getting dirty. <laughs> this guy contains 14 eyeshadows that are 0 0.02 ounces per shade, which in my opinion is in the smaller end of the spectrum. That's the only thing that I kind of think sometimes about at the Anastasia palettes is I wish that they did come with more product, but you are getting 14 shades. Uh, there's a total of 0.74 grams of product inside of here. It does come with the standard ABH brush that they always do. I believe this guy is made in China. It's a synthetic. Um, I always feel like especially this end of the brush is much too stiff 
to use in shadows that are this soft that they could totally change up the game, give us a different brush. I bet we all have about five of these. <laughs> I should tell you guys where everything is made too. The bronzer is made in the PRC, which I learned from Stephanie Nicole is the People's Republic of China. <laughs> I didn't know that before. The Amarezi highlighter is made in Italy and then the eyeshadow palette. The eyeshadows are made in the USA and the brush is made in the PRC. Um, typically when I see like the eyeshadow, like the eyeshadows are made in a certain area, um, I've seen on other palettes when it's kind of listed like that that it's assembled somewhere else. This one doesn't list that. It just says the eyeshadows are made in the USA and the brush is made in the PRC. Talking a little bit about the actual eyeshadows, they're very pigmented. They blend really well for me every time that I've used this. I think I've used every shade in here except for I believe just these two mattes right here, these two deep ones, I think are the only two shades that I haven't used in here, but I've been pleased every time that I've used this palette with the look that's come out of it. It's very easy to use. Again, they blend really well, they're pigmented. Uh, the one thing that I do have with these is I, ha I get fallout from them. Um, they're very soft, so you don't have to, you barely have to put your brush in there to pick up pigment. Um, I do find like I can use a little more pressure with the shimmery shades, but the mattes just require just a little bit of tapping and it picks up product. I do get fallout, it brushes off my face pretty easily. Um, there are some repeat shades in here uh, like Sienna, Burnt Orange, uh, I think Dusty Rose. I'm going to go ahead and zoom up close and give you point out which ones are matte. There is one satin eyeshadow in here and then the rest are kind of metallic shimmers. So here's the palette up close. There's a sticker on the back with the information on there and then you open her up and there's the mirror. Standard ABH kind of packaging. Uh, so for matte eyeshadows in here you've got Orange Soda, Mulberry, Dusty Rose, Burnt Orange, Sienna, Rustic, Cypress Umber, and Noir. Tempera I do wish was a matte, but it is more like a satin with a fine, fine shimmer to it. I do wish it was a matte for a brow bone. I've been, I enjoy a, a matte brow bone eyeshadow. <laughs> and then for metallics, you've got these two, Sultry and Bronze, are kind of the same type of metallic formula. This one, the rose pink shade, is just a little bit lighter in the terms of metallic. And then these two right here are some pretty strong shimmer shades, the Glistening and Fairy. So let's go ahead and give you guys some swatches. The first one. And then these next four. The mulberry shade is quite gritty and dry feeling, but um, it blends out beautifully. I've got it on today. And then the next four. And the last three. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Again, the only thing I kind of wish is that Tempera was matte, but um, that's just kind of a personal preference type thing. Otherwise, like there's a nice range of shimmers and mattes and everything works together really nicely no matter what shades you go and use, which is it's a really, cor it's correlated really well. <laughs> Here's a quick side-by-side -side of the Modern Renaissance, which is on top and then the Soft Glam on the bottom. Just so you guys can see some color comparisons in there. There's actually a couple, a uh, few shades that are the same. Now, if you're interested in seeing the look that's on my face and these products demoed, you can hang tight and we'll get into it right now. BPM on Sirius XM must be at like some type of music festival and they are jamming hard <laughs> this afternoon. And then I turn it off and it's just like crickets. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, let's get into some highlighter. Uh, Sonia G Sculpt 3. It's been my uh, go-to highlighting brush uh, as of the moment. And this is the Anastasia Am Resi. So I'm just going to run it through here. And then put it on... I think I got a little heavy-handed with the Ket R3. So I look, I look t quite tan. But I actually really love it. <laughs> I'm just going to blend it through here. And then put a dash above the tip of the brow, Cupid's bow, where my Libre is. And then I'm going to turn it this way and fan it down my nose. I started with the Ket powder foundation on and then concealer and powder underneath my eyes. So that's what's on my face so far. I've got three products before I put the highlighter on. <laughs> now using the new ABH Tawny bronzer, I'm going to take the Sonia G Sculpt 1 brush, which is a great big fan brush. And I'm going to dip it in there like just like that. And then I'm going to start in the hollows and really buff it in. Bronzer is super pigmented, but it blends out really nice. I discovered if you're too heavy-handed, it could get a tad muddy. Put some on my ear. Down the jaw. And I typically use the tips of the bristles for those parts, and then I kind of use the side of the brush, like that, for my forehead. Then I'm going to take this Just Do It Highlighting Duo from ColourPop and I'm going to mix these two shades together. It's kind of uh, be a shimmery coral. I'm going to use a Sonia G Sculpt 2 brush for that and again just use the tips to dip back and forth between them. Um, this blush I found is pretty easy to use. You don't have to worry about getting too carried away with it. Then I always like to go back over with the highlighting brush. I usually don't pick up any more product, but I really like that top edge to be blended together. Now I'm going to tone down some of that glow. Instead of using the Meteorite Pearls, which I typically use, I'm going to use the Ambient Lighting Powder in Ethereal Light today. This one, um, it, it mattifies just a little bit more. And I'm just going to use a Chicago Beautylish uh, powder brush and swirl it in there and I'm going to buff this all over my face. When I'm done with the face products, then I typically take off my headband so it doesn't like dent my hair. Not that I fix it anyway. <laughs> and then I put on something on my lips that's uh, conditioning. So while, when I'm doing my eye makeup, my lips are nice by the time I get to lipstick. I'm going to put on this e.l.f. lip oil in Pink Kiss. I've been enjoying these e.l.f. Uh, lip oils. This has got a nice color to it too. It's got a nice sweet smell. Now I'm going to take the Lily Lolo Eyeshadow Primer Duo and I'm going to mix between the two shades. I'm just going to use my finger today and prime from the lash line to up underneath the brow. This is a quite tacky uh, base um, and I don't set it because if I do I have a hard time getting eyeshadows to stick to it because I do have dry eyelids. Then using a Builder 2 from Sonia G, I'm going to go into the shade Sultry from the Soft Glam Palette. I'm going to pack this guy on the center of the lid and bring it up. Jeez, oh, I see some chunks flying. I've used this palette quite a few times. And um, they do kick up quite a bit of product when you put your brush in there. But they're pigmented and they blend really well. There is fallout though. 
I'm actually gonna just carry this all the way across. And I kind of, because of my lip, my hood, um, of my lid, I kind of angle it downwards and then bring it up. Like, the way that I do my eyeshadow kind of gives me an eye lift. Um, you can, when, when I do, like, hauls and stuff, you kind of can't see it. But right here, if you, you can, if I look straight on with the camera, the crease of my eye goes all the way down to there. Like, I'm tilted back right now, but uh, it's heavy. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people um, see that like in, in my regular videos, but I'm going to take that finishing brush and just brush off this fallout right away. Then I'm going to flip over that same Builder 2 from Sonya G and go into the shade Bronze, which is a pretty gold color. And I'm going to put that in front of Sultry and blend it inward. Then using a Chikohoto GSN 9, I'm going to go into the shade Mulberry, which is a deep uh, brown burgundy matte color. I'm going to tap my brush off and I'm going to angle it. I use the tail end of my brow for this. This is a little method that I, you guys see me do. It just gives me the most lift in my eye. Blend it inwards. cats. Sorry, they're annoying. Then I'm going to use a Wayne Goss number 18. This is the newer 18. I'm going to go into the shade Burnt Orange. And I'm going to start blending out that mulberry color. I'm just going to put it right on the top of the edge of that and start blending it upwards. Then I'm going to go in with the Sonya G Worker 1 and go into the shade Orange Soda. And put that up here. And then using an Esam G29 brush, I'm going to go into the shade Tempera, which isn't a matte. It's got like a satin sheen to it. I kind of would have preferred a matte, but I'm going to put it underneath the brow bone and then also blend right here. Then I'm going to take that Worker 1 and run it back through this area. I'm going to go back in with that Builder 2 and Sultry again just to kind of intensify a little bit. Lost a little bit with the blending. And then I think I'm going to go into the shade, yeah, let's go into the shade Fairy. I'm just using the same brush and brighten this up just a bit more. The um, bronze shade is a little bit deeper gold. Brighten it up. Yeah, so there's the eyeshadow done. I've been happy every time that I've used this palette so far. It's it's easy to use and everything correlates really well. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up my eye makeup and I'll be right back to put on some lips for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe off the lip oil. And I cannot find my Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude Lip Cheek Pencil for nothing. <laughs> what? <laughs> so I'm going to use this Burberry Nude Number no. 1 Lip Definer. Pencil, I'm going to go ahead and line my lips with that guy. Which is a really pretty color too. I hear birds chirping outside. Spring is coming. <laughs> And then in my last video, somebody commented and wanted me to wear the shade Tiptoe from ColourPop. And I actually haven't worn this shade yet because I've been wearing that other shade so much. So I'm going to go ahead and wear this one really mush it into that lip liner. Oh, this is actually a really great pairing. Then 
That is one heck of a combo. I'm living for it. It works really well with this eye look too. <laughs> So there's the overall finished look using the new Anastasia Beverly Hills launches. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to wear sunscreen and I'll see you guys later. Bye.